Coming up, all that's new from Apple Monster Hunter Stories. And look, it's Jason Snell. Hey. <laughs> Time for iOS Today. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. iOS Today is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Introducing Rate Shield Approval. If you're in the market to buy a home, Rate Shield Approval locks up your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. It's a real game changer. Learn more and get started at rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. Was today time Leo Laporte here. Megan Maroney's on vacation. So thank you, Jason Snell, on a rainy day coming I'm here in, in a box. Via the box. Yes, via yeah, not in Petaluma. It's weird to not be in person, but here I am anyway. I'm happy to be here. Works fine for me. We thought we because you're the expert at sixcolors.com on all things Apple. In fact, you probably were at the uh, Apple announcement, right, in September. Yep, yep, and I've got all the stuff. I've got the Series 4 Apple Watch. I got the 10s and the 10s Max. So uh, got a lot, of, a lot we can talk about. A lot yeah. of new stuff. It's nice to have new stuff, isn't it? And iOS 12. Let's not forget, which mm -hmm. even for people who don't have new hardware, oh, and Watch OS 5. Watch OS 5. Yeah, actually, it's really uh, unless you've got a Series Zero, uh, is a great update too. Yeah, actually, we should say 5.01 since we yesterday got a pushed out uh, quick fix. Do you know what that was for? Uh, I think some weird, I, I, some weird esoteric thing where there were like some issues where it would charge. Uh, it, you know, it, it's funny they they finalize the software on the devices and they start to ship them, and then immediately there's like, oh, that's a thing we need to fix right away. And I, I think they're prepared for it because these updates come up really, really fast. But obviously, something that they didn't foresee was out there. Yeah, and yeah. I updated my watch yesterday. It was exactly a, it was where. a small update, so I guess that that kind of means it probably wasn't a big deal i'm just going to really quickly check to make sure that ios 12 now actually unfortunately on this i'm on the beta of ios 12 12.1 uh, uh, 12 on my ipad yeah so you're living in the future living in the future but you know and and i should point this out that anybody who did that and we always say don't do that uh on your production device anybody who did that l like i did was unable to uh just kind of simply back up and restore their uh, iPhone uh, stuff when they got their new iPhone, if you got a new iPhone, because it, it, it said, no, no, you, you, this is, a, I think it said this is an old version. Yeah, so, you, can't, you can't back up, uh, use an iCloud backup of an old, uh, of, a, of a newer, newer OS version. than the one that you're going to. So you, the one right. you bought is brand new and it's iOS 12. But if you're on the 12.1 beta, your 12.1 beta backups won't go on your 12.0 phone, which is really annoying. I Maybe next year Apple can do this thing when they reach Gold Master where they actually set out like a push notification to people who are on the beta who say, okay, this part of the beta is over. Maybe you want to get off now. Step off the carousel. I should have done know? that. And, you, uh, they, that. How do you do and, that? Uh, well, so instead you have to do it manually, which is you hear that it went gold master or it's a week before launch or and whatever. You and, and you go to profiles in the, uh, in the preferences and the general preferences, I think all the way down at the bottom and you delete your, your profile for being in the beta group. Right. And at that point you're on regular phone update cycle from then on and it should be okay. Um, if you do go through this though, yeah, what you have to do is you have to enroll your new phone in the beta, update to the beta, and then restore from your iCloud backup, which is annoying. Well, so, uh, <laughs> good, there's a warning. I'm going to just open a new iPhone just because why not? This is Why a, not? Why not? I have, as you can see, and by the way, I, I, I've already got it in a case, so I'll probably take it out of the case. This is the, uh, but I wanted to show you, this is the, the updated folio case that Apple sells, which I've come to really like as my uh, wallet case it's a it's a it's a nice lie flat wallet case soft supple leather so i immediately got another one i purchased the uh, iphone x sorry are you having trouble by the way saying 10 and x uh yeah you, i mean you're either saying excess or you're saying tennis um, <laughs> and either way it's not the best yeah i i, I try to do it right I, when i'm on a podcast i will say 10s pretty reliably i have to admit that in my mind's uh, <laughs> voice, it's always XS, always. I know. It's hard. It's hard. It's very hard because you have a letter that's supposed to be a number and then a, 
letter that's supposed to be a letter right next to one another. <laughs> so this yeah. is the um, this is the uh, ten S. Sorry, I almost did it. Ten S Max, and I got gold, and mostly gold. I mean, it's slightly goldish white, but mostly yeah. the gold is this is the aluminum uh, bezel. That's that's pretty sweet. Not? It's uh that's uh stainless I think, right? Stainless steel. Uh, is isn't it? it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, did I say aluminum? I'm sorry, yeah. stainless. And, and then, then glass on the back. I don't know what we got for the uh let's see. This will be fun. This will be fun. This is the 10S. Oh, it looks like we got the the pure white one. So, I'll I like that. I like that one. The silver cuz it's the white is sort of a silvery white. Some people yeah. don't like these whites because they're not pure white. They're kind of like off white, but yeah. that's because they've got that metallic kind of shimmer coming it's through. A, a gray which white. I yeah. I think is I think it's really pretty. Um I I still think the silver one might be the best looking one. Yeah. And I, I always it is used pretty. to like black phones, but I don't like the black one as much. It's sort of like a chocolate bar or something. Remember you know? that uh, uh, what used to be you'd also choose the back for the bezel. But because there's so little bezel, they're all all the bezels are the same now. They're that's all, that's all the black. best part because I yeah. hated the white bezel, uh, big dominant picture frame around all of my right. content on my phone. And with the ten line, that's not an issue. You know, you're buying, especially if you put it in a case, you are buying a very hint of a glint of metallic <laughs> around the corner, and that's all you ever anything. see. Yeah, you yeah. So in that case, it doesn't really matter. The setup now. This is the iPhone 10s, which is really. Uh, same size in many ways uh, almost identical yeah uh, externally anyway to the iphone 10 to last year's iphone internally though not at all right uh internally it's very different yeah it's got a new processor the a12 which is uh pretty dramatically different and it's got way more of these machine learning cores and it's faster um the camera sensor is 32 percent larger and then there's a lot of uh, image processing in the A12 that's going on there, too. I think the camera is probably the biggest update. But it is true that from the outside, I mean, the only way you can tell that this is a 10s and not a 10 is if you look on the bottom of it, uh, there's a uh, it's an asymmetric number of little speaker holes. Oh, my and God. I know all the designers out there just I just blew their minds. There's three like on the left and, and now. six on the right. Oh, Yep, yeah, and it's like four and eight or something on the 10s Max, and on the 10, it's an equal number. Even though they some of the holes didn't do anything, they did try to make them uh, symmetrical in a way, and they gave up this time. They're like, no, nah, we're not going to even bother. Hysterical, because you know, and this is really, this is where Apple fanboys really kind of are so mockable because. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, people raved over, look how symmetrical. You know, Android, they never do this. They don't have that beautiful symmetry. And now that Apple's not symmetrical, look at the lovely off axis. <laughs> It's like, okay, it's just a phone. Let's let's. I think I think once you notice it, you can't not notice it. But it'll be one of those trivia questions yeah. where somebody will be like, "I can tell the difference." It's like guessing somebody's weight. It'll be I can tell the difference between a ten and a ten S, and it's just where the speaker holes are. Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. It's it's a little funny. Apple so often drives strange design decisions based entirely on symmetry. Um, yes. You know, they, they, you could argue that their keyboards in the MacBook. One of the problems with the the arrow keys is they didn't want to do this traditional inverted T because it was asymmetrical and so instead you get this you know easy to mistype arrow configuration and then here uh here finally they seem to have just said we give up and we're going to have asymmetry on the bottom of the phone why why oh, well. have asymmetry what's the point of that i don't i i think that i think on the inside i mean last year i believe some of the holes didn't go anywhere or do yeah, anything just, they were there entirely for, the, for, for show. show and they had to move this you can see there's that little antenna line on the bottom right, too so they the had left, to do yeah. They, they had to do a bunch of stuff uh, to re modify the uh, the antennas inside, and that's that's the thing about phones. Is turns out if you remember back to Antenna Gate, um, you can t have all the great design in the world, but ultimately your phone does need reception. So that I think Apple has prioritized where their antennas go over maybe a little bit more symmetry. Sensible. Uh -huh. I have to say, this does explain one thing. I've had the deuce of a time. I have a couple of docks, lightning docks, getting my phone in the dock. And I think, am I, if I gotten stupid, it's moved. It's not in the center anymore. Yeah, That's, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's slightly drifted, off slightly, center. The camera, the camera drifted <laughs> like a, like a half a millimeter or something too. You can still use old cases. I actually have an old case. I have an iPhone 10 case here uh -huh. for my 10s. And it works? And it, it fits, but you can tell that it's just a this little, so I mean, shocked. you can't tell yeah. by looking, you have to like stare at it close yeah. up, but it's, 
you know, they, they, they're little tweaks here and there. They have definitely made little tiny tweaks. And how about the bottom? Is the is the charging port on your case appropriately situated? I guess there's enough room in there that a little movement on the bottom. Well, the brilliance of uh, these cases that Apple makes anyway are that they leave a huge cutout at the bottom. <laughs> so they can slide around for, anyway. For the speakers and for charging, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. That, can, that so makes they sense. They don't care. Uh, the, speaking of antennas, I don't want to start with the negative, but I but I should mention since you mentioned antennas, there have been some reports, and I know my wife. One of the reasons I'm aware of this is my wife has had problems with both Wi-Fi and cellular data reception uh, on these new phones. But Apple's not saying anything. And uh, have you have you heard of these uh, issues? And and do you know what's going on? I've heard that people have experienced them, which I think is not unusual for a new iPhone. I think yeah. the question is, is there something weird with the hardware or is there just something weird with the software? Maybe not even iOS, maybe even like the modem firmware. Sometimes you'll I... see these things fixed by a carrier settings update right. or by an iOS update. And again, I think it goes back to Apple, you know, Apple tests, you know, a few thousand of these internally. Right. And then th they suddenly are selling millions of them in a very short period. Right. And there's always going to be something that they didn't anticipate. So their their silence probably indicates that they're trying to figure out if there's a problem and what right. it is and what's causing it. And they've generally been pretty good about uh, doing software fixes to solve them. I have no problem at all on mine. And we both have uh, 10S Maxes. Um, she's going to call Apple and see maybe they want to replace it. Maybe they want to push something. Maybe they want to take a look at it. Uh, but but she's definitely it's you know I poo pooed it at first but it's very clear she has to reboot several times and then it will seem to kick in. We even tried putting a new SIM in. We got a new SIM uh, from T-Mobile and it, and same problem. So I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure what's going on. It could just be she got a a, a bad one. So it's happens. entirely. I mean the first one's off the line, right? The yeah. the they are learning about production. No, we don't like to talk as tech people. We like to talk about the idea that right. everything comes off fully perfect. formed and perfect and, <laughs> and, and everyone is exactly the same. And Impossible. the fact is these production lines, yeah. somebody gets like, I mean, outside of Apple, somebody gets the first customer unit off the line and yeah. they're obviously tweaking it as they go. And that's why we have warranties. And that's why, you know, because even at the volumes, Apple or, or Samsung produce phones, even a 0.001% failure rate is thousands of devices. Right, right. So, you know, some people are going to get, especially early on in the process, they're going to be lemons, and then they're also going to be software tweaks. So, right. you know, it's a little bit of both. So, yeah, she might have got on a lemon. It's entirely yeah, possible. She says she got one made on Monday morning. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Let's uh, let's walk through the setup because that's changed slightly. Uh, but it's uh, is it still your recommendation uh, it has been mine for the last few uh, iterations to take your old phone, plug it in. I like to plug it in rather using than using uh, iCloud, but you could use iCloud backup too and back it up. I like to plug it in, use iTunes, turn on encrypted backups so my passwords will be preserved and back up my old phone and then go through the initial setup on the new phone and restore it from the backup once it gets to that point. You know, I have stopped doing that. I think they have fixed... This always used to be a problem, right? I mean, we've talked about it. I know you and I before that um, on the day that you're supposed to have this most delightful experience, which is you get a new iPhone and then you get frustrated because the transfer is really hard. And I think Apple's put a lot of work into making it a lot better. It's not perfect, but I think it's a lot better. I am using the iCloud backups now. And uh, because the iCloud backups uh, are now able, you have a, an encrypted iCloud backup and it holds your passwords so you you and you do a transfer between the two devices where you hold one device near the other and it says would you like to start a transfer and then you take a picture of one screen from the let's, other screen let's do it we can actually uh, we can actually do it if you want i'm going to mention before we do that one more thing this is the out of box experience you do get the headphones you get the small charger and some people are complaining because this charger is so low wattage that it yeah. takes forever to charge the iphone and apple does charge a fee for upgrading to a higher wattage uh, charger. You also get the Type A to Lightning cable. What you do not get anymore is that adapter for the headphone jack. That's a little bit of disappointing. You'll have yeah, to yeah. We've buy left one. the dongle. The dongle era has left. Dongle era has gone. Behind. Now you have to buy your own dongle. And I some guess, people are complaining that the iPhone does not have really a fast charging mode, uh, even if you have what is that? The sixty-nine uh, watt. I can't remember. No, it's the thirty-nine watt charger. With a type yeah, the USB-C charger, yeah. right? It doesn't charge fast like the iPad Pro charges fast, right. or Android um, devices charge fast. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's it's an overnight charger. 
just might as well live with it. That's what it's designed for. Apple think Apple seems to think that's all they need to do. Well, it's probably uh, we'll better for the battery, right? Fast charging is hard on the battery, so it may be that, yeah. uh, that that's their thinking. All right, so you turn it on. It comes at usually at least half full. Mine's about three-quarters full. And then says hello in a variety of languages. Uh, if you swipe up, you get to choose the language you'd like, choose the region you'd like. And this is that quick start you were talking yeah. about. So this will work with any older iPhone? I, I forget how far back it goes. It's maybe iOS 10. It says, um, yeah, he says if you have an iPhone or iPad running iOS 11, 11 or, or later. later. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. I didn't realize And then that. it's using ad hoc networking. It's basically using the same kind of thing it uses for AirDrop. Right. Um, and, and they are going to detect one another, hopefully. Well, they did. You know what? It's my fault. They did. <laughs> and then I pulled it. Cl uh, I accidentally closed the dialogue. I wonder if I have to start over. Let's see. Let's try again. I'm going to bring them together. Because <laughs> you get a pop-up on the other phone. Yeah. Uh, eventually you will. I like to do this, even though this me is meaningless. It's using, <laughs> Is it? you said ad hoc networking. Is you say, is it Wi-Fi or is it Bluetooth? I think, I think it's, uh, well, I think it's, I'm not 100% sure. It may be both. It may be trying all avenues. Right. It's my, probably Bluetooth. My but guess is it's Bluetooth it could be ad hoc LE because uh, yeah. uh, if you get too far away with AirDrop, certainly, and you're not, we've, we discovered this last night. If you're on the same Wi-Fi network, uh, it doesn't matter how far away you are. You can do AirDrop. But if you're not on the same network, the, uh, AirDrop only works if you're in proximity. So that tells me yeah. it's Bluetooth, right? I think it's I think it's a combination. It's weird secret sauce that Apple does. But I think uh, it is a combination of Bluetooth to discover and maybe Wi-Fi oh, radio. There, there you go to do the uh, thing. So you get this thing. This is set up new phone, unlock to continue on your old phone. Okay. So, and, and then you and so what you do is you tap unlock to continue and you okay. put in your uh, you'll you'll face unlock ID. your face okay. and and use your Apple ID to set up your new phone okay. as the next prompt. And it's using the same Apple ID that's on the old phone, obviously. Yeah. And, and this is and so, anybody with an Apple watch will recognize this. I don't know. You can't. Right. It's so bright. This screen. Let me see if I can turn it down. You can't really see the. The cloud, and I guess you can't. But if so, there's if, a. This is a physical. This is the Apple basically wants proof that both of these phones are in your hands. Yeah. So that it can start the data transfer, because what it's going to do is it's going to pass a bunch of Apple ID credentials, and then there's a second step, which it, on the new phone it's now going to ask you for the password you use to unlock the old phone. Oh. So it's doing this sort of two-step little dance to make sure that one device and the other device are both in proximity it's a, it's a security controlled by thing. the same people yeah. and the person who is passing the information is the person receiving the information yeah. and if you do all of that then it's going to take all that critical information that your one phone knows this was always the problem it's like i have two phones they're right next to each other <laughs> why can't one help the other one update and now, this lets that happen. It I do notice that it, 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 it's now on our Wi-Fi. So it got the Wi-Fi credentials from the old phone. It got, I presume, my uh, iCloud credentials. I haven't put yeah. a SIM in it. Um, I'm wondering if that's, it says the activation server can't be uh, reached. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And the ways of activation of cell phones are mysterious. Mysterious. I don't know. And but, I don't know if they mean activation to the... No, it's got a SIM card because they come with SIM cards. So I don't know what's what's going on here. We'll we'll see in a second. It may it may literally be that it couldn't talk to the Apple activation yeah. server too. There you go. There you go. It's okay. And and so you pass. Then you just step on the new phone. You step through a few of these um these Here's various data and sort privacy. Of, and it yeah, explains, all of your approvals and permissions that you need to give. Apple believes privacy is a fundamental human right. Uh, this is their GDPR uh, yeah, page yeah, there. Wow. Okay, but you know what? I think they're they're accurate. Now I'm going to teach it my face, right? That's right, because Face ID, your face data does not leave uh, the individual device. So on every new device, you need to set up Face ID. Okay. So there's some stuff that does not get transferred when you transfer between devices. That Apple feels like you got to just retrain it on the new device. So Kevin, show my uh, show my single so that I can show you training what it looks like so you you're what you're trying to do is is rotate your rot you put your head in the thing and then position your face in the frame and then rotate it up and down and left and right so it gets all the angles right yeah you get a little like neck stretch you try to try to make your nose do a little circle <laughs> and it says first face id scan complete oh yeah that's perfect yeah complete okay continue 
Now it wants me to do it again, right? Why I, is that? You got to do two. I think that it wants uh, to compare the two and make sure that it's got it's seeing what it thinks it's seeing. Apple and added iOS 12. You can add a second face. Yes, Apple added that second face, but it's not a second person's face. It's your face twice. Well, I I trained myself as the second face as the alternative appearance on my wife's phone, and it totally worked. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. so it, so that's interesting. Maybe you look a lot like your wife. I but, think that, I think maybe <laughs> it's not a hundred percent, and that you need to have some similarities. I don't know. I think people tend to marry Apple, people who are yeah look like them. look like them. Yeah, Apple has said that uh, it is not intended for a second person. Yeah, just the a idea second is appearance like with glasses a, or yeah. If you have a very very different appearance because of you know you shaved or you put right. on a hat or and you have hard time being recognized by Face ID, you add an alternative appearance right. and then it kind of puts those together and it'll it'll recognize you as Superman or Clark Kent. <laughs> I did it with my glasses on and off because I sometimes have them on, sometimes have them off. Now, yeah. it sees the last time I backed up the other phone, which in this case, oddly, is a 10s Max, but we'll pretend it's an iPhone right. 10 or 7 or 8 or something like that. Uh, it was last backed up yesterday. Would you like to back up now so you can restore your new phone? Uh, no, I'm going to restore from the October 1st yeah, backup. But it asks, that's that's really nice. Isn't like that nice? Your, your backup seems... Uh, it might be too old. Why do you want to use this backup or not? Or do you right. want to go back to the other phone, do a backup, and then restore that backup? And you get to choose. They they they've come a long way in the last two years with this process. It used it's to be really so improved, bad. and that's one of the reasons yeah. I wanted to show the onboarding process. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to read this, so I'll just agree. Uh, settings from your backup. Now, here's what it's going to take from my old phone. Right? Allow yeah, Siri. Right. Allow Maps. Share Analytics. These are all of the permissions that I have on right. the old if phone. You did if you did a new setup, it would ask you for those permissions. And what it's doing here is rather than just taking them, it's saying, okay, here's what I got. Do you just want to go through these or do you want to ask me? And then you have to, with Apple Pay, if you've got Apple Pay on the other devices, generally what you have to do is not add all your credit cards back, but you need to put in the three-digit code that's on the back of your credit card to verify that you have the credit card in your possession and then it goes to the bank and says, hey, here's a new phone with this credit card. And then so you have to go through a, a few steps with Apple Pay, although you don't have to reenter the whole card, just the the uh, the security ID on the back. Yeah, that was my experience. I like that. And it's the same experience on the watch. Uh, you just have to enter the, the security code and uh, and then it will con con you know continue on. I won't right. do that right now. We'll set up that later in the in the wallet because I don't want to spend all that time. Now, I have a watch, so it's interesting. It immediately noticed, or it somehow knows. So do I want to use this watch? I guess that's it. And then Yeah, so that's a change for them where they used to, you used to have to manually uh, sync and then unpair right. a watch and then repair Horrible. it and then re restore from the backup. And they have added this process where they realize you've got a new phone and the old phone had a watch. And if you say yes, it will do all the things required to transfer the watch from phone A to phone B uh, so much better than it used to be. Now, does that mean I've now, tra <laughs> unfortunately, my watch is now on this phone? Oh, well. I'll have to, Maybe. I'll have, I'll have to back out of this a little bit. Share with app developers. Do you, I always share app analytics. What does yeah, that mean, why not? though? You sh yeah, you should totally back up and say no to the Apple Watch thing right now, or you're going to, uh, unless you want to use the uh, small phone yeah, for a while. Uh, we'll set that up later. Thank you, Apple. Set that up later. Uh, yeah, suddenly I'm using an, a, yeah. a 10S. You know, this all gets washed by Apple and then passed on to the app developers, but it can be helpful if people are getting reports of crashes. They get some data, the app developers do. They get some data that shows where those crashes may be happening. And oh, but so, you said something interesting. So they're in, Apple's anonymizing it before they send it to the app developers? I think that's how that works. It goes, like it says, it's uh, through Apple. So it goes to that's Apple cool. and then Apple kind of passes that's it on. Great. All right. So I always say yes, because I'm that kind of guy. Now, here's another question mark. True Tone Display. This is something that started uh, with the iPad Pro and then migrated to the uh, iPhone. Did the 10 have True Tone? Yes. Uh, the iPhone 10. And that, what is that? So it basically, there's a, there's a little sensor on the front of your iPhone that is measuring the light, the temperature of the light in your room. Because as you might know, like... Some lights are more blue, some lights are more yellow, and what True Tone tries to do is detect what kind of lighting you're in and sets the white point of the display to match. So the yeah. idea is if you're in a very yellow room where every, and your eyes adjust, right? So your eyes start to see the yellow light bouncing off of a white surface and you white balance in your brain 
and you think that's white. And then you look down at your phone and it's set to a different white point and it looks super weird and blue and that's not good. So with with True Tone turned on, if you're in a yellowish lighted room where the whites look a little bit yellow, the white on the phone will also look a little bit yellow. Yeah. And the reason you turn that off is if you're a designer or you're somebody very color sensitive who wants perfect color all the time rather than – but it is much more pleasant if you're in a dimly lit room in the evening and everything is kind of warm and yellow uh, to look down at your phone and have it be warm and yellow and not this glaring blue white. Yes. Uh, and that's that's separate from the night settings Right, right. That that is all about what lighting you're in. The the yeah. night shift setting automatically kind of uh, artificially yellows up your display right. uh, in the evening based on time, not right. based on your location. I'm I have mixed feelings on the True Tone display, and uh, the good news is you're not committed at this point. You can turn it off later in display settings, but I. Um, it made my phone look kind of weird, I thought, and so I, I actually disabled it on my 10s Max. But let's 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 enable it here. Why not? Why not? Uh, so I'm going to continue. Now it does want me to give. And by the way, this is, seems to be a bug in iOS 12. Um, I use a separate iCloud account uh, for my iCloud and for uh, iTunes. I have a different account that I use for iTunes, and it has asked me now more than a dozen times in the last several days to re-enter that password on my new phone, which I find very annoying. It's asking me on this phone, maybe it'll remember this time, so don't look. I'm going to enter in my password. This is <laughs> this may be something that's unique to the way I do it. I like to have a separate password for iCloud and the iTunes uh, store purchases, and that's partly because I have a uh, family on the iTunes store, and I don't want them to have to. So it's going to now send me a text message to verify, which I will enter in the verification as soon as I get that. I love that feature. Again, this is the third time it's verified that uh, that I, not only am I me, but um, that uh, I have the phone here. <laughs> it's now restoring from iCloud. So this is going to take a very long time. It, it, it's not as bad as you think. Um, but it will put off the data and then then there's this next step where it gets done with the basic data that was on your old phone and then it loads all the apps from the apps. And that's what takes a long time. And you can use your phone while that's happening, right. but not any of the apps that haven't downloaded yet. And right. that takes even longer. It's all faster than it used to be. It's way better than it used to be. I think this is Apple at really hearing the, the criticism. I'm so happy that like three years ago – the, this was a really bad experience, and it's very clear that they have every year tried to yeah. add some steps to make this less painful. So if you've got your old phone and your new phone, you hold them together, you press a few buttons, you put in your password a few times, and then you wait, you know, a half an hour, and all your data should be there. So isn't that great? So there you go. That's uh, that's done, and that was the setup, the onboarding process for your new iPhone. And what is that, 10 minutes? Uh, fairly easy. Do remember that it's best if you have your old phone so that you can have it next to it and do that setup and have a copy. You should also remember you have to have your iCloud uh, password. Actually, I wouldn't have if I didn't have two. Because I have two, uh, I had to enter my iTunes uh, right. separately. Right, but right. It, because it's, it getting, your my iCloud it's, it's getting your iCloud uh, authentication from the other phone, doing that double step of the camera and then entering your passcode from the other phone. It, it, they have figured out like this is enough to make it plausible that phone A's uh, credentials can be transferred to phone B. And so it does that. And that's great because one of the biggest annoyances of moving house like this is constantly being asked to enter in oh, your iTunes password, which Apple used to do. Right. It used to be, you know, 10 times you would get asked that when right. you were setting up. And now right. most of your passwords will come across. Not all. Some apps store their passwords in different places or say, don't store my password. So I keep, even now, every now and then I go into an app and I'm like, oh, this app doesn't know that I'm logged in. And um, fortunately, that's all sort of uh, less common than it used to be because starting with iOS 11, I think, or, or maybe it was, yeah, iOS 11, you can do app passwords in the keychain so you know everything is slowly getting better but there are still you still have to enter passwords it's not perfect i have to say you were right about the icloud that's done so that only took a couple of minutes but it wasn't copying apps 
It was just copying the basic data, password settings, that kind of thing. Yeah, if you've got documents, like if you've got some pages, documents, or, or stuff like that, those will all come uh, come across. But the apps themselves will then get uh, okay. loaded from the App Store. And that's important because different iPhones have different processors. And so you actually can't transfer the like the binaries of the apps from phone A to phone B because ah. it may be running a different version oh, for phone B. Okay. So you have to, they, they go back to the source of the app store for those. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, so now it rebooted um, and it's taking a little time to reboot. I don't know what uh, exactly is going on. It's a mystery, but I have to say, okay, you convinced me. My standard recommendation was always, I'll oh, do a hardwired Back up and restore if you get a new iPhone. I think now this iCloud is very nice, very simple, very fast. The only negative is if you, you know, you're just going to use iCloud storage and you may have to pay for additional storage if you have a lot of stuff in your cloud. It's true, although the 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 expense of iCloud, it's not great that Apple only gives you five gigs free. I I think though they've got a plan that's like a dollar a month. That that's gives the one you a I lot, use. Now you get 50, 50 gigs for a dollar a month, which is not bad. And you can share it in your family. And that's yeah. probably enough to back up all your devices in your exactly. family. And it's not great that Apple's charging you $12 a year for that. It's sort of stupid. I don't know why they don't just give that away. But it, it's enough to do it. And I highly recommend that because most people aren't going to do an iTunes backup. And it would be really bad if you lost your phone and you yeah. lost all your data. So so I'm impressed. It's uh, It's got my... Um, it's got my wallpaper set. In fact, all I have to do now is do the face recognition. Let me do that real quickly, see if it actually works. Uh, oh, it's the first time I have to enter in my passcode, so I'll do that uh, real quickly, of course, right, uh, to enable Face ID. And now I'm getting also what, something that everybody who has Macintoshes will be used to or other Apple devices. <laughs> Your Apple and ID and phone number are now being used for iMessage and FaceTime on a new phone. This is another yeah. great security reminder. This is coming through on my iPad. This is Leo's iPhone XS 2. Oh, yeah, that's right. And now it's asking for location permissions. You're currently right, that's, using... That's, that's actually find my friends, friends yes. right? And messages. And, and yeah. you can only have one that is the definitive, like, where is Leo? Oh. And if you get a new phone the, and you don't do this, then your where is Leo disappears. So what it does is when you start a new device, it says, do you want this to be the definitive where is Leo uh, device? And uh, if you say yes, it moves it from the old phone to the new phone, and then your little dot will show up wherever you take the new phone. Hmm. So maybe not now. I should. Maybe not now since you may I be staying phone. with the, the uh, 10s Max. Here's, uh, here's something that makes... Chrome users really mad, but Apple uh, iPhone lo people love. It wants me to log into my Google account in settings. And from then on, I don't have to log into it ever again on any of the Google apps or Chrome or anything else. I'm going to cancel out. Notice yeah. it's it's downloading the apps. So that was your uh, your initial point. But I love it. it. It knows all my, you know, in past iPhone updates, not recently, but in years past, I've had to set up all these folders again, and it's just a pain in the butt. It remembers everything. It's got my wallpaper. It's done a really nice job, and it's pretty quickly loading stuff. All the Apple, it, it loaded fantastic. Now, let's see, does it have my calendar? Let's see. It needs to access my calendar, remind my reminders, my contacts, and yeah, it's got my calendar. Uh, that's pretty sweet. I mean, it, within a very short period of time, I, I'm up and running. Let me just see if my contacts are in here. I will, I'll hide any uh, phone number. Oh, I have to have to log into that one. That's okay. That's fair enough. Now, one question for people with music on their phone, or in my case, I've got audiobooks. Those do not get propagated over, do they? Correct. I mean, it depends on the app, but generally they don't. So if you have a podcast app, they will the, the app will want to re-download all the stuff that it had on before. And and uh, music is the same way. And this actually just bit me and uh, my daughter both. We were just uh, commiserating over dinner last night about it. I went on a, a brief business trip this week and or uh, last week. And I realized while I was in the air that even though I had uh, downloaded an entire playlist on my previous phone, yeah. um, it didn't automatically, even knowing, here, here's a, a question for Apple, like even knowing that I had downloaded certain playlists on my phone, when I transferred phones, it didn't make any attempt to re-download those. So I had to go in and manually re-download my music. And I spent that that leg of the trip without any music on my phone. So right. there is stuff that you need to you need to either manually re-download or you need to launch the app so that the app can re-download it. So like my Overcast, 
knows exactly what podcasts it needs to download, but I had to launch Overcast and right. have it download all of them again before I could listen Same to Same thing with my Audible. I'll have to log into the Audible. It doesn't save those credentials, and then I'll have to say, yeah, these are the books I want. Right. Uh, but here's the really good news. U2's Songs of Innocence... <laughs> It's, it's in is your purchase still, music. Still here. It, I, I haven't lost it. I was worried, but no, it's <laughs> Songs of Innocence by U2 still there. So you can never escape it. That was the free one that some people complained about. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Apple. So that's a nice, easy process. And I have to say, the easiest it's been uh, in, in ever. And that's good. Apple makes it uh, easier and easier. Uh, you, of course, uh, probably will want to plug it in pretty quickly because I can already feel it's warming up as it downloads mm -hmm. all of this stuff. That's going to use and up some battery. if you're uh, using iCloud Photo Library, you will get even more of that because um, even if you don't set it to download all your photos onto the device, if you've got a very large library, it's still going to download the basic photo information when it can, when it's on Wi-Fi and right. plugged in, right. and do all of that image analysis stuff so that it's all searchable because that all has to happen on device. Right. It doesn't happen in the cloud. And that takes up a lot. That'll warm up that uh, the back a lot. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There was there was some machine learning happening right there. <laughs> uh, I, I, this, is, this is, I have to say, a beautiful phone. Uh, I think they've really uh, done a nice job. Uh, I haven't really had a lot of experience with the camera yet, but the pictures I've taken, as always, are great. I think Apple at this point, the cameras have, are so good of the last couple of generations that any improvement I feel like, is going to be incremental, right? Uh, I, I would say no, no in the sense that this version, so the, the uh, sensor is 30% bigger. And the big thing is that they're doing the smart HDR thing. And right. that that is super technical uh, for most people. What is a dynamic range and all that? The short version, the simple version is it makes the photos you take look more like what you see with your eye because the human eye can differentiate this really broad range between darkness and light in yeah. one you know, the combination of our eye and our brains kind of processing the images. And this camera does that. This camera, when you take a still picture in normal light from the uh, using the front camera, it is it is taking four pictures that emphasize brightness, four pictures that emphasize darkness, one long exposure that grab, grabs shadow detail. And on the fly, it stitches them all together into a single image. It takes nine images each time you press the button. Yeah. And wow. um, and. You know how we're always told, like, don't shoot uh, facing the sun mm -hmm. because everything's going to be backlit and you're not mm -hmm. going to see anything. Look at this. I was, this. Able, to, I I was a... able to take pictures facing straight into the yes, sun. Yes, I've got a big bright everything. light behind me, which should really screw this exposure up. But no, my face is perfectly exposed. Now, some have complained, and I think this is the case, that in the on the front-facing camera for your, your selfie mode, it does a lot, almost extreme softening and skin improvement. Yeah, they're doing, um, they're keeping the, uh, they've, what they've done is technically they've like cranked up the ISO and they've reduced the shutter time and they're doing this for processing reasons. But what it does mean is there's more noise in the sensor. And so their algorithm currently tries to, to do noise reduction. And the end result is that everything seems a little bit smoother. Would not surprise me given the feedback they've gotten if they tweak that in a software That's update software. to be a little less... Yeah aggressive but i'll tell you i was taking shots i took my dog for a walk in the in the uh, woods this weekend and you know there's deep shadow and then there's the sun shining through and i was able to take pictures where you can see the deep shadow you can see the blue sky it doesn't get blown out you can see the clouds in the sky through the trees and, like that was not possible with other cameras um and also on the video side they if you're shooting 30 frames per second 4k video with this thing it doesn't shoot 30 frames. It shoots 60. Oh. And it alternates every other frame with one that's stepped up to see bright objects and stepped down to see dark objects. Wow. And on the fly, knits those together into a an extended dynamic range frame. And th think about the processing power. You're, you're processing two 4K frames every 30th of a second and combining them in order to create this dynamic range after shooting 60 of them in every second. And that's that's the default setting for video. So video looks a lot better as well. It's not quite HDR, but it's extended, they call it, extended dynamic range, where they're able to do more because of the power of the sensor and their uh, image processing they're doing. i got to play with this more. This is, of course, one of the features Apple talked about was the ability to change what uh, pros call depth of field on after the photo's been taken. You see the background around me is slightly blurred. I can by uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. 
cancel that part. Going into edit on this photo, which I just took, I can change the aperture, the f-stop, and make it more blurry. That's all the way down to f1.4, or bring everything into focus by going to f16. That is a really, I mean, that's pretty impressive that they can do this. And I, I know that this data is all stored and other apps like Focus have been able to do this for some time. But it's nice that that's built into the camera app. And I think people will want to play with that a little bit. Yeah, and the algorithm they're using there is a little bit uh, updated. It is, you know, that is the fundamental thing is all of these portrait modes are fake. They're right. not a long yeah, lens. Yeah, look at my they're... hair and you can see what's what's going on here. Yeah, because you my can hair... actually see... That's the nice thing about being able to crank it up all the way is that it really does expose everything that it's doing wrong. Yeah, my hair is getting blurred. It's the same distance as my rest of me, yeah. but it's getting blurred because it thinks that's in the background. Yeah, and the algorithm is – yeah, I took pictures of my dog where um, her tag – uh, really confused it, where it was like, yeah. do I blur this? Do I not yeah. blur this? Because yeah. it's a it's a circular metal object that's close, but it's looking through. You can see the distance, and it didn't know what to do. When it works, or um, you don't notice that it's got something <laughs> weird, it looks great. And I actually think the best thing about that feature is you can back off. If there's something right. where there's a real weird flaw, you can just back off the focus a little bit yeah. to make it a little more sharp, and it is more forgiving when you do that. So, you know, it's, it's, but let's not forget it is, it, it is fake. <laughs> Even with the two cameras getting depth information, in the end, there is a filter that is blurring that stuff algorithmically. It's not optical. And so sometimes it works and sometimes it fails. Elise is saying, and I think others are saying, um, that the, one of the uh, things that they're noticing with the iPhone XS is it's so big in their hands. They're not, they're not crazy about it. And I, and I have to say, if you the the nice thing that's the 10s Max, I should say the nice thing about the 10s it is the same size as the iPhone 10, which a lot of people said, wow, Apple's found the perfect size. Um, yeah, the 10. Remember the 10 being bigger than the six, seven, eight. Right. Uh, and but not what, as what, big as the six, seven, eight plus. Yeah, and th this is the funny thing about the difference between the 10 and the 10, or the 10s and the 10s Max. Yeah. Is that the Max is not is. It's not as far to go once you're on the 10. Like the 10, you're already using a, a little bit bigger phone. Right, right. So the size difference is not as great. Right. And so I think there are, a lot, and it's an identical phone otherwise. So it's very easy to lose perspective. If you don't see both of them at once, you can see the max and think right. it's the it's the regular model. And right. then you pick it up and you're like, oh no, this is a little bit bigger. Yeah. But there are always people who love plus phones. And the 10s Max is for those people because it will give you more. Um, and I think some 10 users might be more inclined to use the max because they've spent a little time with right. a larger phone and therefore it's less of a leap. Um, I'm not one of those people. I'm one of those people who I appreciate the 10s max. It is a beautiful device, but it, you know, it makes it very hard for my fingers to tap on things on the screen. Cause I just can't do it. It, it, it for me, it's a two handed kind of device and I don't right. want my phone to be a two handed device. Some right. people love it. Now I'm torn. Cause I actually hadn't really played with the 10s. And I do like the size. I like that iPhone 10 size. I thought that was a really great size. It makes it feel small. Isn't that funny? It's yeah. a phone that's larger than the traditional iPhone yeah. has ever been. And yet, compared to the Max, it is hilariously small. It might be that this is just the right size. I have a feeling, uh, you know what, maybe I will start using this. Now, I had hoped to get to iOS 12 and the Apple Watch. Let's just quickly cover the Apple Watch, the new Apple Watch. Two new sizes they went from 38 to 40 millimeters and from 42 millimeters to this one, 44 millimeters. But you right. also get a bigger screen. And I don't know if you can tell. Uh, this is the one of the exclusive watch faces for the new larger uh, uh, Series uh, 4. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I, I guess it goes closer to the edge. They're, the bezels, which were basically invisible, are smaller now. Yeah, the bezels uh, were bigger than you would think on the old model, and now they're <laughs> mostly gone. And although it's not, you know, these are all postage stamp sized screens, but right. it is thirty more than thirty percent bigger on both well, models. That's a significant change. And it, important to note also for people who bought watch bands that even though the size numbers have changed, the large watch will still work with your old large watch bands, and the small yes. watch will still work with your old small watch yes. bands. Their band compatibility remains intact, which I think is smart because Apple likes people to spend $50, yeah. 100 $150 on bands. Nope. And that, why would you... It, why would you do that if you knew that next year they wouldn't work? Apple, so Apple has Apple done the Apple missed a right little thing. bit with the... Uh, they, they they could have sold banned dongles. 
But yeah, no, oh boy. <laughs> imagine <laughs> but no. imagine the opportunities there. Uh, it is notice of the Series 4 is noticeably faster. Uh, it also seems to be, uh, to me, to be better with heart rate. Uh, I, I would occasionally lose track of my heart rate when ex exercising vigorously on the Series 3. On the Series 4, I have not yet been able to get it to lose track of my heart rate. It's yeah, been very, it's, very it's a good. second. It's the second generation of the heart rate monitor. So yeah. they finally have updated that after, you know, three years on the old model. They updated the crown, which has got a haptic in it now. So you can actually sort of feel it ticking as you scroll through things, which is a really nice effect. Ah. There's the EKG feature in the U.S., which will be turned on in the next month or two, where you can actually give yourself this single point uh, EKG and send it to your doctor if you're worried about, you know, uh, heart health in some way. You can do that. That it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. That's not and available back, yet. And not available yet. And it'll be only in the U.S. to start. Yep. And the back is uh, ceramic instead of metal now, which actually matters a lot for reception in terms of Wi-Fi, but also in terms of the cellular model. <laughs> it will get way better reception. But to me, the screen is the story here. Like, there are so many more pixels on that screen, which means they've redesigned these two watch faces, Infograph and Infograph Modular. Yeah. And so there are new complication styles Look there. Look at all the complications. Apps have to get updated to directly right. address those styles. Right. You don't inherit them. Your old, old apps won't show up in those complications until they get updated. Right. But I'm really excited about the possibilities there if you want a an information dense watch face, and they also added new watch faces that are just pretty pictures and uh, and colors and stuff. If you're somebody who is offended by the idea that there would be that much information on a watch face, yeah, I think I I actually always eliminate uh, the uh, other strange faces, but I should just pull them up so that you can see them. Like lo they're lava and and melting things, and um, here we go. Look at that. Ooh. That's actually yeah. real video, which uh, is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, and so so if you if you don't like information density, I, I saw no a lot of people complaining about yeah. about the information density thing, and it's like, look, choice. I want more information density on my watch face, but they got plenty of options. If I have a complaint, it's that they really didn't update any of the other watch faces for the larger screen. I have some favorites. Um, but they don't get to use the new complication styles, which kind of frustrate me. I wish they had I, – I feel like the watch faces in general, um, they can't just keep adding new faces. I think they need to start uh, updating old ones a little bit more, and right. maybe that will be a watchOS 6 thing. Right. Uh, do you use Infograph? I am using Infograph right now, um, although I still miss my classic, uh, my classic face, the uh, utility face. And Infograph Modular is interesting, but I'm one of those people, I really like having the hands. Yeah. I, li I, that, like, I don't want just the digital time, I want the hands. Yeah. And so Infograph Modular uh, or is, it's beautiful. And if I got uh, some data in that little center section, like they keep saying that they're gonna do a Major League Baseball update where they're gonna let you put a line score in there. Oh, like, that'd be okay. cool. I'd be tempted then, yeah. but um, right now it's Infograph, the one with the hands, and then some complications on there. We'll right. see how it goes. Some companies, some software developers have already updated their complications for their Apple Watch apps, I noticed. So I guess it's possible, and uh, it's just a matter of time before uh, many of them uh, do. Have you Now, the other feature that we were talking about, this now this comes with anybody with Watch OS 5, is that right? Or is this? I think so. Yeah. Is walkie-talkie. Um, do you ever use that? I hate it. I mean, it is, it, is, uh, it is well implemented, I think. I hate the concept of it, but I, I know some people love it. If you remember back to the old days where people did push to talk yeah. on their phones, so you could like Nextel yeah. pioneered that, right? Where it was like you got a walkie-talkie except you're talking to your friend wherever or a group. And so everybody else in wherever you are would hear the beep, hey, Bob, what's going on? Uh, yeah, all of that, right? <laughs> I hate that. I feel like if you've got a cell phone, you should put it to your ear, and I don't want to hear all your little beeps and stuff. But the fact is some people loved it, and this is the feature for those people because that's basically what it is. It's yeah. a push-to-talk kind yeah. of thing. Uh, I can't get anybody to do it with me, so that's the real problem. Yeah. I, I made Lisa get put uh, take my uh, Series 3 watch, but she, she seems to forget it many days, so I'll try talking to her. So you press you press the talk. I As you see, you can choose – I only know two people with Apple Watches, Lisa and Megan, and Megan's on vacation, so I'll choose Lisa, press the talk button, and now it, there's a period of connection, and that's around 30 seconds of, oh, hey, are you using your Apple Watch today? Let's see if Lisa's listening. So I just sent her a message. It found her pretty quickly. 
Maybe it just found a watch that's not being worn. Because that would be, it normally it would be sent in real time. If she responded right away, I would, oh. I'm trying to make this watch look sexy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jason. Hey, oh, hey no. Jason wants to talk to me too. Oh, he hates it, but he's going to talk. Let's go back to Lisa. Oh, oh, did I lose her? Oh, she took it off? Oh, connecting to Lisa. I think she must have taken it off in attempting to make it look sexy. Baby, you can make anything look sexy. How's that for sucking up? I'm praying to God this is not on the air. <laughs> um, well, yeah, it is. It's okay. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's something for a spouse. Uh, maybe yeah. if you had a, a young child that you you know just wanted to stay in touch with, uh, if you have an Apple Watch with LTE, they don't need to have a phone nearby. Um, I you know yeah I have mixed feelings about it. Um, but I, think, I think maybe there's some coworker kind of stuff too. If you're on a, a project somewhere uh, and yeah. people need to pop back and forth and just send little terse messages, but it's not a conversation, yeah. and maybe have your hands relatively free so you can just kind of hear it and tap instead of getting out your phone. I see that there are scenarios where this actually makes a lot of sense, but I don't think it's a like broad consumer feature. Yeah. By the way, there is a setting. To make yourself unavailable in in walkie-talkie, so you don't oh, yeah. yeah you don't just slide it down and you can see there's an uh, available and I can turn that off. So if you don't want to be bugged by that, in addition to all the other notification settings, you can just turn off walkie-talkie selectively. Uh, I am a big fan of the uh, Apple Watch. I was very skeptical when they first came out, and even for the first couple of editions, I bought them. But uh, I think with Series Three and now with Series Four, Apple is really uh, doing a great thing. I'm, I'm very impressed by these. Uh, they eliminated the expensive versions, which helps me <laughs> because I used to buy them. Uh, now I can only buy the aluminum or stainless steel versions. and uh, Or I guess I could buy an Hermes Apple Watch and if I still wanted to bust the budget. You, you could, yes, yeah. if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, iOS 12, quickly in summary, is it uh, stable? Should people upgrade Yes, in fact, it is um, designed specifically for people with older phones. So if you've got an older phone and you've thought, I need to never upgrade because Apple's always yeah. going to slow down my phone to make me buy a new phone. Which they've this done. This is the update. This is the one where I have heard that Apple software executives spent the summer using iPhone 6s. Wow. Or maybe 6s. Oh, that's and the whole, that's the whole idea, <laughs> right, is to... It, these are supposed to make those phones work faster, not slower, that they, for the first time, are not Good. really optimizing Good. for new hardware, Good. but old hardware. And they claim that it's actually a lot faster on old devices. So if you've got an older device, I think you actually should absolutely go to the new version of iOS because you're going to get some new features, but you're also going to get a faster phone. I also, I have to say, and we've talked about it before, so I'm not going to belabor it. I do feel like Siri suggestions and shortcuts are going to really change the way people use phones. I uh, and and maybe more importantly for Apple's point of view, how they use Siri. Yeah, uh, I really think it's a fabulous. Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back here. I think it's a fabulous uh, feature, and um, and uh, I've already started playing with it, and I'm sure others uh, will do that too because it's just uh, the ability to have Siri do things intelligent uh, on command is is pretty exciting. So. I yeah, guess. basically all the apps uh, are logging. They can contribute their features into this big pile of things. So as you do things in an app, it's sort of leaving, it's almost like a browser history. Right. And they can suggest and the system can suggest and you can actually go into the settings and find them yourselves right. and make these shortcuts that are literally, you don't need to do any programming. You don't need to launch a special app. If you do something um, the app may even suggest, would you like to record a shortcut? So like for my podcast listening, I use Overcast. It has shortcut support where I can basically say, uh, use this phrase and I record my voice doing it to resume playing my this playlist and do that for different playlists and do that for skip a chapter or go to the next podcast. And at that point, it's like recording macros or you like keyboard shortcuts, but it's all driven by the Siri voice interface. And then if you want to dive in further, there is the Shortcuts app, which lets you stack those together and make a single command that'll do like 10 things. Right. And that could be incredibly complicated, but it doesn't have to be. You can start out with just these individual shortcuts in apps 
or in series suggestions saying, hey, I noticed that this time you usually do this thing. Do you want to make a shortcut for that? And I do think it's going to take some time. People are going to have to figure it out. But I think it's the most exciting thing to happen to Siri ever. Yep. I'll yeah. show you uh, on my uh, phone. It's noticed a few things I've done, uh, including, I guess, uh, UV index. So these are suggested shortcuts. I can press plus and say, yeah, if you want to check the UV index, how would I say that's to Siri? Record a personalized phrase. What's the UV index? And then I have that phrase uh, built into, and that's coming from Dark Sky. So, hey, yeah. Siri, what's the UV index? The and it'll index. actually <laughs> give oh, me no. a... Oh, no. Yeah, I think we have to work on that a little bit. But that was, uh, it's giving me the Wikipedia entry telling me what a UV index is. I think that's I, not good. I think I screwed it up. I do have a lot of shortcuts, as you can see already. Uh, from Siri suggestions, everything from call my wife, directions home. One I found useful and I wish I'd had uh, when we were traveling, save my location. We often, uh, when we uh, get off a, a bus or a train and have to go back there, I will say, Lisa, say, don't forget to drop a pin. This sends me a text with my current location automatically. So I can just say, hey, Siri, save my location. And it will, uh, it'll do it. <laughs> so it's running a shortcut called Save My Location, and uh, it will actually text me my current location. So there's some things that you, you know, it, it's going to take a little, I think, attention from people, but I hope they yeah. will use it because it's really fantastic. And it's now uh, saved, sent me a text message uh, saying location saved. So that's pretty sweet. Um, iOS 12, worth it. Haven't seen a lot of problems with it. They've uh, updated it already a little bit, and then we'll update it some more. Uh, but I think it's highly recommended for uh, all iPhones, even uh, older iPhones. All yeah, right, let's definitely. take a break uh, and get. I don't know if you have a cap ready, but get your I can app probably, cap. <laughs> I can probably get a cap. Get your app cap out because we're going to do our app picks of the week in just a second. But first, a word from our sponsor, Rocket Mortgage, the great folks at Quicken Loans. We uh, we're kind of fans of them and. I know they're fans of us. We're, we're happy to have them on the network because they are the number one mortgage lender in the country. They're also, that's in volume, but also number one in your hearts, number one in customer satisfaction eight years in a row. Number one, according to J.D. Power. Uh, part of that, and the only way really you get to be number one is by being uh, customer focused. And so one of the things they did, and we we're always talk about this, is they created Ro Rocket Mortgage which is an entirely online mortgage approval process. You can, so fast, you can do it from your phone at an open house and get qualified approval. Let me talk about the three steps. They call it the power buying process that Rocket Mortgage goes through to take the anxiety out of buying a home. Step one, answer a few simple questions. Not a big loan, not going to the bank, not dressing up. You do it on your phone and they will give you pre-qualified approval. Then, step two, within 24 hours, they verify your income, your assets, your credit. And by the way, with no effort on your part, you don't have to do anything. They'll give you a verified approval. Now you've got a letter that you can show to a seller or to a realtor that gives you basically the strength of a cash buyer. It says they're good for it. They've got the loan. That's huge. But once you've got verified approval, this is something new, the all-new exclusive rate shield approval kicks in that locks in your rate for up to three months. And this is how they take the anxiety out of home buying. You don't have to worry about rates going up. They are now, unfortunately, but but you're going to lock it in, and it won't go up. It can't go up for up to three months while you shop. Best part, if they go down, they your rate will go down. It just can't go up. I love that. You win either way. And this is exactly why America's largest Mortgage Lender is also its best. They think about you. Rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. You could set up an account right now so you're ready when the time comes. Rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. Rate shield approval is only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLS Consumer Access org number 3030 rocketmortgage.com slash iOS today. <laughs> I've got my Mickey Mouse engineers hat on from Disneyland. This was actually brought to me by an actual Disneyland employee. Let's see what Jason's wearing. <laughs> His Viking helmet. I got my Vikings on, yep. Apparently the fat lady has sung. 
Uh, this is a part of the show where if you've watched the show, you know we call it our app caps. We pick our apps of the week and we wear these hats to celebrate. Let's, uh, I, I like it, by the way, that your cap matches your shirt. Did you plan that? It's uh, just luck, pure <laughs> luck. <laughs> Give us an app pick of the week, Jason Snell. I want to talk about Carrot Weather, which I'm sure oh, I've talked about yes. before. We love it. But I want to talk about uh, Carrot Weather in the context of the Apple Watch, actually. So Carrot Weather, it's a great weather app. It's a weather app. It supports everything. It supports Siri shortcuts. It, But the thing I want to talk about is complications. It supports all of the new Apple Watch complications. Oh. And maybe the best thing about Carrot Weather is that you can actually set in the app exactly what data you want to see on different complication styles. So you can say, in most complications, it's like, well, you get what you get. Right. Carrot weather, if you don't care about humidity, like we do in California, we don't care. You don't put humidity on there. You put something else. You put the sunset time or whatever. If you are someplace that has humidity, you put the humidity in there. You can actually go into the, the phone app and customize what data gets sent to every complication style on your watch that's so nice. it it is uh if you want specific kinds of weather data on your watch you can get it there it's also uh got a couple of premium subscription uh things it's a five dollar app but if you want data from specific weather sources you can pay them a little extra so i pay to get weather underground data piped in there so that when i look at carrot weather i actually get the temperature in my backyard nice. because i have a weather station that's on weather underground nice so i can do that but if you don't have a weather station, it works great, too. And if you have an Apple Watch and you want to customize what the weather data is that shows in complications, it couldn't be better. And, of course, Carrot's claim to fame is that it has a character, this robot, that tells you the weather. And by default, it is super snarky and it's very kill all humans. And there's a slider. So you can actually make uh, it super, snark, super snarky. A snark slider? <laughs> or you can slide it all the way down to boring. And so depending on your opinion about jokey responses from artificial intelligence creations, you can uh, adjust it accordingly. I like that because one of the reasons I, I, I of course, have care about weather, but one of the reasons I don't use it all the time is the snark wears on me. So that's good to know I can turn the turn down the snark a little bit. Uh, yeah, I, I have it all the way off. That reveals something <laughs> about me. I, I don't really need jokes yeah. like that from my AI. Yeah, Carrot Weather's motto should be, buy it for the snark, keep it for the complications. Because that's awesome. And I hope more developers do that, uh, support uh, complications in a better way on the Apple Watch, because that's huge. That's really huge. Good pick. Mine uh, attracted my eye because it, it was an Apple game, just came out on the iPad and iPhone, that cost $20, which is a pretty high price for an Apple game. But I guess it can get that money. It's Capcom's. Monster Hunter Stories. And Capcom's Monster Hunter is a very popular, very popular series. series. I think it started on the Nintendo 3DS. Um, but Kevin was telling me it's the PlayStation 4 version that really took the world by storm with Monster Hunter World. This is not Monster Hunter World. It's a little bit more friendly. But I thought I should show, at least show it to you. Because if you're going to spend $20 on a game, and I know there's some people say, well, it's Monster Hunter. I'm going to get it. But others might be looking at it saying, really? $20? So let me show you uh, Monster Hunter Stories. I, it, it, by the way, plays beautifully on the, uh, on the iPhone, especially if you have a Max. Now, unfortunately, this long cutscene, but there's a couple of negatives besides the price. It's four gigabytes, so it's a huge download. And... <laughs> It has these really. It has this really long cutscene, and I don't. I don't know if I can. Oh, I could skip it. Thank goodness. I thought I was going to have to fast forward through it. Um, user agreement will just accept it. Uh, I'll start with a new game instead of loading. It does. It will remember your uh, games. Uh, no, I'm not going to import the adventure begins. We're just going to start completely from scratch so that you can see the uh, the beginning. Is this Japanese? This guy's uh, talking to us. Because it, I can't tell. Or is it just a made-up? Oops, I just turned it, turned off the sound. Is it a made-up voice? I can't, I can't figure it out. Why am I? There we go. Amirasa. 
-hmm. Anyway, I'm going to skip this too. The the uh, the the uh, premise of this appears to be: <laughs> you are a small child living in a strange culture where they tame dinosaurs and ride them. It's very Japanese, as you can see. Kind of got that anime style. Let's see if I can skip this one too. Yeah, let's skip all the cutscenes. Cutscenes don't really seem to add anything but backstory. Um, this, uh, and if you know me, you know that I don't like games where uh, it's it's they're not really touch first. This one is, you know, you it's sort of like that. You have a joystick, and you can. It, I find the movement pretty good. Walk and crouch buttons are on the right, on the left, the joystick to move around. When you see something, you can interact with. Like this fellow over here. You'll get a little button to press. And you can talk. It's a lot of this. I could do without so much of this. Uh, I don't think I can skip this. They're going to go. They're going to find some eggs. And they're going to get in trouble with the chief. But eventually the idea is to find eggs and train monsters. Uh, now, Monster Hunter implies that you're killing monsters. And indeed, in Monster Hunter World and other versions, it's a lot about killing monsters. As far as I can tell, this is more about raising monster eggs and learning to ride them. Uh, I, I don't know if you've seen enough here to know whether you want this game. I, we should probably fast forward through this. Oh, they found some eggs. Oh, how exciting. Then they're going to do a ceremony to the eggs. They're going to wake the eggs up. They're going to get in trouble. Oh, I get to create my character. Well, I think I'll be a boy. Regular face or a pointy chin? I like pointy chin. I can make him any uh, any color I want. Uh, I can make his eyes be less manga or more manga. I can make them red if I want. I can make his mouth. Oh, well, let's make him buck toothed. Why not? Spiky hair? No, I'm more like a like a neat bob. Oh, how about some side bangs? It's very, oh, and very, uh, let's see, I think green is the traditional color for side bangs. Name input, we'll call him Loot. What do you say? All right. Now I've created a very strange looking character in the game. Oh, sacred kinship stone, bind thyself to the spirit of Loot. See, they've actually put me in the game, which I like that. I mean, I you know, even though it was a custom character, he's he's right there with the lime green hair. The time of rebirth is nigh. Awaken now, etc. Let's skip this too. Uh, in fact, I wish I could skip the whole darn game, but unfortunately, I paid twenty dollars and downloaded four gigabytes, so I have to. If you're a Monster Hunter fan, I'm worried that some people will say, uh, "I wanted to kill monsters." I wanted to kill dinosaurs. That's why we play Monster Hunter. Here's the cute little Hockham Village. Let's quickly skip, 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 skip. I can't skip. Uh, they're going to get in trouble now. Okay, let's select story quests. Okay, we can, we can do story quests. I'm going to say hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, little baby still can't fly properly. He's pretty big for a baby, isn't he? Hey, you little brats. Uh-oh. You broke the rider's code and entered the forest. Punishment's all around then. Whoa. You're finally home, Cheval. I was so worried about you. Mom, I'm really sorry. You even caused trouble for Dan. <laughs> go and apologize to Chief Obama. So then we're going to go. No, it's Omna. But I call him Obama. Um... Going to see Chief on Omna. I wish I could get into the game a little faster. I probably should have. Oh, uh, go up the ramp. Go past Dad. He's mad. Go past the guards. They're going, what the heck? Here's Chief Obama. He's going to tell me something. He's a very nice chief. So he says, oh, no point in getting. By the way, he speaks in rhymes. Well, the children are safe and sound. There's no point in getting tightly wound. They'll have more than enough time to reflect upon their heinous crime. If you say so, Chief. I'll let you off on this occasion, though your actions were rather brazen. But if you break the code again, well, it's best I don't explain. Yes, sir. Hi, that was Japanese, so maybe it is Japanese. Thank you, Chief Obama. 
Ho, ho, ho. I think you already know. And yet, I cannot help but nod. What has happened is rather odd. See, apparently, this weird kid, Loot, has amazing powers. Loot, you have the potential to become a rider most influential. You've got potential. That's amazing. Oh, get ahead of yourself, blah, blah, blah. Let's get to a quest. Oh, I hear the quest horn. Is it a monster? Loot, we need to go. Okay. Finally, I can skip. <sighs> the cutscenes are gorgeous, though, I have to say. <laughs> uh oh. The magic plant is withered. I think a monster's coming. Maybe I do have to hunt monsters. Maybe I have to hunt this guy. Oh, it's scary. See, there's a friendly, there's a friendly dinosaur. He's gonna get on the friendly dinosaur. It's a Nicar it's a Nicaragua. It's a Nicaragua. Nicaragua. You you know those things are that's pretty scary, huh? But this is only the cutscene. I have to say, even after the cutscenes, it's pretty nicely rendered. It's it feels very Japanese. I I played this on my phone, so I didn't save the. But I wanted you to see. Oh, one year later, <laughs> what could possibly have happened? Back in the village. Did we experience that year in real time, Leo? In real time. It feels like it, doesn't it? Man, that was a long year. <laughs> a year has passed since Nargakuga's attack. Hakum Village is slowly rebuilding. Today's the day of the right of kinship. So I think I just saved you 20 bucks. I don't know. Maybe not. Oh, should we talk to him? I like his hat. It's been a whole year <laughs> since... Since we last, the village is now getting back to normal. What was Ah oh, Cheval? He's still this. We lost an entire family. He's just a kid. Blah blah blah. Okay. So I guess I'm gonna look for some quests, find some things to do. Can't get in there. Maybe you should go see Chief Obama. He'll probably have. Oh, here we go. Let's talk to her. Oh, loot. So they've devoted a whole screen to, ah, Loot. At last, Loot, you finally get to become a rider. Your lifelong dream. <laughs> yeah, it feels lifelong. I'm going to become a true rider. Yes. I, I really don't want to become a rider, he says, etc., etc. Skip, thank you. Oh, man. Needs more skip buttons. That would be my uh, first reaction. Should I, uh, what am I going to do? I don't know. Wander around. get the idea. Do I need I show more? I probably should go ride. So anybody who play in the chat room or anywhere out there play Monster Hunter and is this like the other game or cuz I'm I'm not a Monster Hunter fan. Quiet lad looks nice. Okay. I don't know. Is it worth twenty dollars and four gigabytes? You beat. Oh, here's a here's a monster. Maybe I can ride it. Nope. Ah, here's where I manage my monsties and eggs, but we're clawsed right now. Meow. Come back. What? Unaccountable cat puns throughout this game. Uh, I don't know why, but there are. They're not cats. Just they have cat puns. So I guess I have to go find a uh, an egg, hatch it. And ride it. Loads of fun for the entire family. Should I just leave? Hold on, hold on. If you head out now, you won't make it back in time for the rights. Right. Guess I gotta wait around. Here's a bulletin board. Nothing on it though. Monster Hunter Stories, twenty dollars from Capcom. It was a uh, Apple Pick of the Week. I guess it's our app cap. I just wanted to show you before you spent the money on it. That's all I'm saying. Looks fun. <laughs> Follow the marker in my HUD, says somebody. 
Oh, yeah, there's a marker in my HUD. Always should look for the marker in your HUD, shouldn't you? How'd that marker get in my HUD? How do I get there? Oh, this is the kind of game that makes me nuts. Do I go over here, maybe? Oh, yeah. I followed the marker in my HUD, and look what I found. This. Oh. Camp. Oh, this must be for the right. No. Nope. Oh, I go in there, probably, huh? <gasps> All of rights. I just sent you a walkie-talkie. <laughs> yeah, I heard. That's a problem, though, if I don't know how to get it back. Do you have to go now, Jason? <laughs> Please, he says, I beg of you. <laughs> Jason Snell, thank you so much. Find Jason at sixcolors.com. Of course, the incomparable. Um, what else do you want to talk about? You've got so many great podcasts. There's, yeah, yeah, the incomparable uh, Relay FM, some tech podcasts there, and sixcolors.com has got all my stuff on it. Nice. Thank you so much for putting on a Viking hat and joining us today. We really appreciate it. I'm happy to do it. Come back anytime. Will Megan be back next week? Not after she sees this pick of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I might not be back next week. Thank you for joining us. We do iOS today every Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific. That's uh, noon Eastern time. Uh, about 1600 UTC. If you want to stop in and watch live, you can. You can either... Be in the studio. If you're going to be in Northern California, just email tickets at twit.tv. There's no charge, but we like to know you're coming. Uh, if you want to watch the live stream, that's at twit.tv slash live. And, of course, you could download copies of the show at twit.tv slash iOS or use Overcast or Pocket Cast or iTunes and, and subscribe. That way you'll get every episode. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on iOS Today. Bye-bye, Jason. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye! <laughs> What for?